production of Traveling Kansas Oakley is underwritten by Buffalo Cultural Center, preserving and sharing the history of the Wild West. Historical footage provided by Heritage Documentaries, When Farmers Were Heroes. Kansas Humanities Council. Logan County Implement. People State Bank of Oakley. Dave's Body Shop, Mike Chrysler. Great Western Tire in Oakley and Colby. Mittens of Oakley. Western Plains Energy, continuing to make great strides in the ethanol industry since 2001. Pioneer Feed Yard. s and Communications, local people, local service, local solutions. Farm Credit of Western Kansas, proud to serve the ag and livestock industry in Western Kansas. And by the Bank of Oakley. Campbell Insurance, Bruce Campbell, your trusted choice agent. Oakley Area Tourism. Stop for the legend, stay for the day. Information available at tourism at discoveroakley.com. Troy and Lori Sporer. Oakley Farm and Home True Value, a local store featuring products and professional advice that can help you complete your projects. True Value, behind every project is a true value. Join us for a visit to see places of interest and attractions right here in Kansas. This is Traveling Kansas. Welcome to the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center in Oakley, Kansas. We are a visitor information center, so we have all of your free maps and brochures to help direct you on your path in Northwest Kansas and around the state. We have um, a 9,000 pound bronze sculpture depicting Buffalo Bill um, on his horse shooting a buffalo, um, as well as a storyboard that explains the story of the day that Buffalo Bill um, had the contest to receive his title as Buffalo Bill here uh, in Northwest Kansas. Um, we also have an AM radio station that plays the story of the contest as well. As another point of interest, we have a large Kansas history mural done by Dennis Scheel out of Ellis, Kansas that depicts history across the state and all the things to see and do here in Kansas. We have a gift shop with Kansas made products and lots of interesting gift items as well as a 3,200 square foot event center that hosts everything from meetings to weddings, um, showers, reunions, sky's the limit. Uh, when visitors stop in, one of the first things we hear is, oh my goodness, it's a buffalo. We have Fred in our lobby, who is a large taxidermied buffalo that was donated to us um, as the Wild West Historical uh, Foundation. So Fred is definitely a point of interest. Everyone wants their picture taken with Fred. Also, just three short blocks away is our Fick Fossil Museum that offers more to see and do here in Oakley. I'm Kelsey Shelato, and I'm the director at the Fick Fossil and History Museum in Oakley. And at the Fick Fossil and History Museum, we have a wide array of different things ranging from locally found uh, fossils, minerals, and uh, of course then we have our local history uh, from the community. By and Ernie Fick, who the museum is named after, found the fossils on their ranch south of town, and she actually turned the fossils into artwork, so that's what we're famous for. She was featured um, in Ripley's Believe It or Not. She is the only one that we know of that turns fossils into artwork. And that, her artwork is on display throughout um, the museum. We have the oldest documented Mosasaur, and it has its eye socket intact, which is the only one in the world that has uh, fossilized skin tissue in the fossil. And then of course we have our local history, which our permanent exhibits feature a sod house, a uh, railroad depot exhibit, as well as a general store. And then we have our local military history on display permanently. The Sternberg Museum uh, is in Hayes, but we do have a large amount of Sternberg fossils here at the Fick Museum. He did a lot of his exploration in Oakley and in Logan County. So we uh, have a lot of different pictures and items that were prepared by him on display. 
The Fick Museum is located at 700 West 3rd Street. We are in the same building as the Public Library. Our uh, building was recently remodeled. We expanded and have a brand new addition which will host rotating exhibits. So if you have visited us before, make sure you come back and check out all of our new things or visit us for the first time. Kansas State Cornhusking has actually taken place here at the current location for the past four years um, in the cornfield owned by Gary and Raylene Keller behind our building. In 1969 and 1970, a group of men in western Kansas were searching for an event to attract travelers off of Interstate 70 uh, to the community here in Oakley. One idea that finally surfaced was presented by our Logan County Agricultural agent Ross Nelson. Um, his idea was to recall the old days of holding an old-fashioned hand corn husking contest and hopefully draw the large crowds that had once attended them. Well when I was um, in grade school they held a county corn husking uh, about three blocks from the school and so they let the school out so we could see it and they went for an hour and 20 minutes then. I worked in the Logan County Extension Office from 1970 to 1988 when I retired. And I was with Ross when he instigated the first corn husking contest. Sat down on my knees on the floor making <laughs> posters and, and signs. And every year I'd say, Ross, you sure you want to do this? Is it worth it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So. Well, it got pretty popular, and so uh, I wanted to keep it going. Ross Nelson came and asked him to help, mm -hmm. and he said yes he would, and he found out uh, at that time he was selling Pioneer Seed, but he was working for the Gars Company. Uh, what he did that year, I know we, we paid for the trophies, but a couple of years after that, um, they started to pay for the banquets. One, one of the Huskers was from Illinois or somewhere, and he hitchhiked to get here for the corn husking. And after it was over, George and I took him out to the bus station and George paid his way back. I contacted Frank Bieber, he was within the extension and he knew the House Brothers and he uh, uh, arranged for me to meet them and we went up and talked to them and they was real happy to help get it going. And Kenneth had a copy of the minutes of the rules and uh, he gave, gave that to me and we used it for the rules. Kenneth House entered into this project in 71 at the request of Ross and all these hard workers that have been talked about and all the work that they put together. The reason he was invited was because he was the only person who had actually been involved in a real contest. He had been involved in the contest through the last 10 years, 30s to the 40s. Uh, they couldn't have found a more enthusiastic person because he just loved reliving the memories of his youth. I think Ross would tell you, uh, and maybe I'm biased, but I think Ross would tell you that he was a great help in the sense that his personal knowledge of how to do the gleanings and all the samplings and all these things proved very beneficial in those first years. After a year or two, all these other people picked it up and did very well with it. But he never lost his enthusiasm. He, he went to the grave with it. Of course, my father, Kenneth, and my uncle Lawrence were brothers and both were involved in the husking uh, from 1930 on until the war, of course, stopped the husking in 1941. And you said Dad was probably the most uh, enthusiastic corn husker, but his mother 
would have been equally um, enthusiastic. Yes. And she saved newspaper clippings of the husking that they had done. And, and from those newspaper clippings, we learned a lot about how important the contests were in the country. So armed with the knowledge from these Huskers and the pre-World War II rules that uh, they provided, Nelson and the House brothers reduced the time limits and husk deductions to compensate for the 10 and 20 minute contests uh, because contests of pre-World War II were up to 80 minutes and pretty rigorous. It was really strenuous work and those fellows in the minute and 20 minutes, the hour and 20 minutes, uh, they were sweating and something terrible. And we didn't want to have a heart attack out in the field, so we cut it back. So by the fall of 1972, the Western Kansas Corn Husking Contest had a new name and became the Kansas State Corn Husking Contest officially. So it had taken 31 years since uh, 1941 for the state corn husking contest to once again make an appearance here in our sunflower state of Kansas. Um, Nelson, his associates, and the Oakley Chamber of Commerce were to continue to host the contest for several years. Greater recognition for Nelson and Oakley would follow in the fall of 75 when they would engineer the first national contest since World War II. Coming up next on Traveling Kansas, we will check out some of the activities at the 43rd Annual Kansas State Corn Husking Contest. Production of Traveling Kansas Oakley is underwritten by Buffalo Cultural Center, preserving and sharing the history of the Wild West. Historical footage provided by Heritage Documentaries, when farmers were heroes. Kansas Humanities Council. Logan County Implement. People State Bank of Oakley. Dave's Body Shop, Mike Chrysler. Great Western Tire in Oakley and Colby. Mittens of Oakley. Western Plains Energy, continuing to make great strides in the ethanol industry since 2001. Pioneer Feed Yard. s and Communications, local people, local service, local solutions. Farm Credit of Western Kansas, proud to serve the ag and livestock industry in Western Kansas. And by the Bank of Oakley. Campbell Insurance, Bruce Campbell, your trusted choice agent. Oakley Area Tourism, stop for the legend, stay for the day. Information available at tourism at discoveroakley.com. Troy and Lori Sporer. Oakley Farm and Home True Value, a local store featuring products and professional advice that can help you complete your projects. True Value, behind every project is a true value. I'm a farm boy from Iowa. I got started shucking back in the, 19, in the late 1930s and early 40s and uh, ended up in Atchison, Kansas in 1951. And uh, in 1971, when I first came out here, we had been having a little a group of cor people who were shucking corn in, in the Atchison area. I got started shucking corn in, uh, the, in uh, the contest uh, part of it in 1991 and uh, my first trip to Oakley and uh, I've been coming back every year since and it's been a great trip. Uh, Oakley's been a great place to have the, the state and the national contest and I think I've been to four or five national contests here in Oakley and every one of them has been great. They, uh, they uh, know what to do and uh, they had a large group that really got the job done. Okay, so you have a 
With the dedicated training time, we hope to get more people in our community and in the area comfortable with the hand husking. So if it's something very foreign to them, you know, taking them out to the field uh, with a dedicated trainer that's experienced and showing them step by step what the husking feels like, looks like, what the expectation is, um, kind of takes the burden off and, and helps them want to participate. So hopefully that training time was not only beneficial, but it was fun for the community members um, to get that one-on-one -on -one with those old time Huskers and learn some of the tips and techniques and ways to do things. There's not an age limit, but height is definitely, um, height and strength both play in. So you have to be tall enough to reach the corn cobs off of the stock and then strong enough to break them off and toss them into the wagon. Even the young kids, if they can get that technique down or figure out how easy or hard it is, they might be future Huskers. You got to get a rhythm to it too, you know. It just don't. It's all about every little split second counts, you know. It's how you throw it in the wagon and everything. All that adds up. You don't want to be standing there looking at the damn wagon because you ain't going to get it in there. I mean, you get it in, but you've wasted, you know, another ear. Yeah. So. Well, they call me Granny. Granny Delaire from Oakley, Kansas. How long have you been doing this? We figured out this morning, 14 years. We skipped uh, two years in there because of ice and snow and uh, rain. And what are you driving today? Oh, I'm my Mini Moline. <laughs> That's the only tractor I'll drive is my Mini Moline. If I don't have it, I don't drive. But I love it. I love driving it. What do you enjoy about Kansas State Corn Husky? Everything. It's so much fun. Cold weather, fog, wind, <laughs> sun, food, people. I love the people. Great people. It was, uh, it was tough going. The corn was, uh, I felt it was a little green. It was on the green side yet, and then from the rains, it made it tough husking. Yeah. Tough breaking out. Started when my kids were little. Uh -huh. My youngest one's 19 now, so uh, let's see. It'd been a few, quite a few years, 10 to 15. Wow. Have you ever been to nationals? Yes. Okay. I've never placed, though. <laughs> Not nationals, but uh, both my daughters have been national champions already in the past, so felt good about that. Yeah. And have you placed here at the state competition? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's been a few years ago before that I placed, but it's been a while. How do you think you did today? First, second, there's three of you. I ought to get one of the three places. <laughs> I don't know. Top three for sure. I, I haven't shucked for the last couple of years because I've had a hand injury, so I just haven't done anything. And the other two guys were always better than me anyway to start with, so. <laughs> They're uh, Perchon and Belgian Cross. Uh, Kate's 12 and Lippy is nine. I raised them. Aww. And I've got two more full sisters to them at home. So okay. they're kind of my bass boat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kate's been here before. Lippy's first time up here. So, but it's, it's different because they never get to stop and go like this. So it's kind of takes them a little while to get used to the program. But. They're used to just, once they're moving, they keep going, like in a, if I'm plowing or hauling hay or something like that. So. Okay. 
How many so it's you, new experience. Have you come to Kansas State corn husking for several years? I now? think that's about my fifth trip up here. Okay, wow. Tough conditions today, mm -hmm. and uh, corn just a little green, but it was for everybody, so it's fair, okay. and uh, had a good time. Good, very good. Have you, how many years have you been coming to Oakley to the state contest? Uh, since 1997. Wow. Yeah, we love it, so we keep coming back. Have you been the state champion before? Yes, several times. When was the last time? Uh, last year. Okay. Did you go on to nationals? Yes, we did. How'd you do? Oh, about middle of the pack. Okay. About middle of the pack. I beat half of them, half of them beat me. <laughs> so with three people in your group here at state, how many do you go against in nationals? Oh, there's like uh, anywhere from 12 to 15. Okay. Yeah. The old timers are the good ones. They know how to do it because they used to, there's still a few of them that did it growing up when they did it every day and, and they're the good ones to learn from. But we love to come out here to Oakley. Uh, you know, guys always put on a good contest. Other activities that are going on in Oakley over the weekend of Kansas State Corn Husking are our Girls' Day Out, which is a large um, gathering of vendors from the area. I believe they have close to 100 vendors. So a wonderful opportunity for people to shop, um, to start their holiday shopping and, and to visit some of those neat booths. For children, there's a lot of fun activities uh, every year at Corn Husking. They love the big corn money pile dig. So after the corn has been um, husked in the field and the combine goes down the rows to clear the rows, towards the end, the combine will come and dump the corn kernels into um, a large square box that's been made. The, one of the local banks, the, um, the bank here in Oakley, sponsors the event and they put for each age division different money into the pile and the kids have a time limit and are able to jump in the money pit. So that's always exciting. Um, there is a corn cob throw for distance where the kids get medals. Um, for how far they can chuck the corn cob. We've, uh, here inside the Cultural Center, uh, we've started doing a pumpkin carving and pumpkin decorating contest where um, kids of all ages can come and participate and have their, their pumpkins judged for prizes, as well as um, an indoor rural life demonstration. So um, the families can go from booth to booth learning about things like tatting and crocheting and farrier, um, like horseshoeing. The corn cook-off takes place on the Friday um, before the Kansas State corn husking. Um, lots of different businesses participate. I think there were 13 this year. Um, go prepared to eat lots of interesting corn dishes. Um, it's sponsored by the chamber and each person is given a ballot at the beginning and you go to each location and you list your, your top corn dish and you submit that and they're given a prize as well as everyone that participates was in a drawing for a prize as well. So it's very interesting the wide array of possibilities of what can be made with corn. Moving the competition from the cornfield and the husking competition to the dinner table showing um, camaraderie um, with the businesses, with the different individual groups, 
that they participated and were excited about the corn dishes they were making. I think that as the, um, the experienced Huskers that have done it for a long time start to um, age out a little bit, the importance of educating and teaching and training those younger groups is so crucial and so vital to the, um, the event continuing. But our goal is really to put a lot of time and energy over the next few years into the youth side of things, getting them excited about it, educating them on the, you know, how this is a piece of our agricultural history, that this is something that your grandfathers didn't have the option of doing. It wasn't a, a fun, competitive sport. They went out in the field and hand husked because that was the need. Um, they didn't have the machinery to go have you know, a big combine with 16 headers uh, to finish all of the husking uh, of the corn harvest up so quickly. Both my grandfather and my father were very much into teaching the work ethic to their children. They thought this was very important and, and older generations did. Uh, in, in today's generation, it's not quite so important, but I think this contest might give a touch of it, of how it, how it is important to put effort out. Production of Traveling Kansas Oakley is underwritten by Buffalo Cultural Center, preserving and sharing the history of the Wild West. Historical footage provided by Heritage Documentaries, When Farmers Were Heroes. Kansas Humanities Council. Logan County Implement. People State Bank of Oakley. Dave's Body Shop, Mike Chrysler. Great Western Tire in Oakley and Colby. Mittens of Oakley. Western Plains Energy, continuing to make great strides in the ethanol industry since 2001. Pioneer Feed Yard. s and Communications, local people, local service, local solutions. Farm Credit of Western Kansas, proud to serve the ag and livestock industry in Western Kansas. And by the Bank of Oakley. Campbell Insurance, Bruce Campbell, your trusted choice agent. Oakley Area Tourism. Stop for the legend, stay for the day. Information available at tourism at discoveroakley.com. Troy and Lori Sporer. Oakley Farm and Home True Value, a local store featuring products and professional advice that can help you complete your projects. True Value, behind every project is a true value. <laughs>